A sensitivity analysis videos will be based on a product mix problem where a, where a company wants to decide how many units of two products to produce in order to maximize the profit subject to three resource constraints. So here in this box you see the mathematical model for the problem where the decision variables x1, x2 denote uh, the number of uh, aqua spa hot tubs and hydrolux hot tubs to produce. The objective is profit maximization and the constraints are about limiting the number of available pumps, um, the number of labor hours that the production uses and the feet of tubing that are also used by the production and there are of course the non-negativity constraints. So in above here in this Excel spreadsheet you see the implementation of this model in Excel. Uh, these uh, yellow uh, cells are where the Excel will put optimal values of the decision variables. Right? I put here as an example solution one, two. Um, and then this is the profit calculation. Here is a function that's uh, some product that calculates the total profit. And these three are also functions, as you can see here, that calculate the pumps, labor hours, and feet of tubing that are used by this production plan. So if I want to obtain the sensitivity analysis report, I first need to solve the problem. So I will go to the solver, and I have already entered here the content uh, that is necessary for solving. So the objective cell is selected as, as this uh, green cell. The, the, the objective is maximized. The changing cells are selected as these yellow cells. And then the constraints are entered with one line, right? These three numbers, D5 to D7, must be less than or equal E5 to E7. And then all variables must be non-negative, which takes care of these non-negativities here at the bottom. So um, the important thing to uh, obtain the sensitivity report is that this model is linear, right? And that we also select the simplex LP method. Right? The default here would be GRG. If you leave it uh, as this, you will not get a full sensitivity report as uh, we would like. So we need to select here simplex LP and we need to click solve. And the second uh, condition for um, obtaining the sensitivity report properly is that this message here, of course, says it, the problem is optimal. And, uh, and this, this actually doesn't complain that the, the model is not linear, right? So we had a linear model. The solver actually accepted it as linear, found an optimal solution. As the message says, if the problem is not unbounded, not infeasible, we can see the solution here and we can now generate sensitivity report. I will also generate an answer report just to show you the content of it. Right, so if you do this, notice what happens here. Before there was just sheet one, two, three, but now two additional reports appear. Right? The, the first of them is the answer report. The answer report actually contains some information about the solution process, technical details, but it also contains a kind of a summary what happened. And this column notice contains some original, sorry, this this part, original values. So before I entered one and two and my profit was 950. Right? It could be a, a previous solution that the company was actually implementing if I had a more reasonable values here. And now the optimal solution is 122.78 and the total profit is 66,100. Uh, this is not something that we uh, haven't seen here, right? We see the same values, optimal profit and the optimal solution here. But the answer report also contains something interesting, which is uh, the constraints part. It tells us the status of each constraint, whether a constraint was binding or non-binding. A, a, a constraint is binding if it prevents further improvement of the total profit. So in other words, why did we only get $66,100? Why did we get the best solution with this profit, not more? Well, the solver tells us it's because of the pumps constraint and because of the labor hours constraint, right? We used up all the units of those resources that were available, and then uh, we wanted more, but we couldn't, we didn't have them. So this is where, that's, that's why we stopped at this profit 66,100. Feet of tubing was not binding, meaning that we didn't use all the available resources. And actually Slack tells us how many units of this resource were uh, left after this this plan is uh, is implemented how many units are left after this plan is implemented right so this is the answer report and the sensitivity report 
is the other one that contains two parts. First one is about variables. And again, there is some re redundancy here. It again shows the optimal solution, 122.70a. It shows something called reduced cost, which we will discuss, la discuss later. It, it shows us the objective coefficients, 350, 300, right? You, you recall that these are the profit coefficients that were actually entered here directly. And then it shows us something called allowable increase and decrease that is related to those objective coefficients uh, that we will discuss in the other videos. And the second part shows us a list of constraints again. And uh, final values means how many, uh, what was the value of the left-hand side of the constraint. And in this case, this is how many units of each resource were actually used by this production plan. Right? So we see 200 pumps are used, 1566 labor hours, and then 2712 uh, is the feet of tubing that are used. And you see here the right-hand side of each constraint. And notice that we actually can calculate the slack by taking the difference between those two values, right? 200 minus 200 is uh, zero. This is the slack of the constraint of the pumps constraint, meaning that we used all the pumps. There is no uh, leftover. Um, labor hours, the same slack is zero. The difference here is zero. And the difference between those two, you can easily calculate. It's exactly 168. This is the slack of the feet of tubing constraint, right? So the slack, so what's, what's in this report, it actually... The slack can easily be calculated uh, from by taking the difference between the right-hand side and left-hand side value for each constraint. And there is something else here that's called shadow price that we will discuss in the other videos. And there is additional information which is allowable increase and decrease for the right-hand side that we will discuss in the other videos.